dread phone on and I would put the mic Yes, we have time for the trail as well. Can you hear me? All right, I think we're hot. We're back with another episode, but first, the sponsors. I don't have a hat on today. I feel naked. First, the sponsors. Head over to www.johnbartoloshow.com and go check out the complete list of sponsors there and everybody that supports the show. The show would not be possible without them. I want to first uh, thank a few. Gallo Technologies, Rhino Metals, Right On Optics, Blackwater Ammunition, Galco Leather Holsters, and of course, uh, Full Quartz and Full Quartz and Firearms, and Enforce Weapon Lights. Funny I leave them in the rear. Got a special guest today, the new, the new president of Enforced Weapon Lights. Saying that right, right? You got it. The new president of Enforced Weapon Lights. The new, new. Matt Wolf. How's it going? Listen, we go back a while. This is amazing. But fuck all that. Let's dive right in. Dive Why right. is the industry doomed? We're going to start there. Starting off with the we bang. had an awesome dinner last night, Matt and I. We were shooting the shit. I want to dive into this. And we started talking. And, um, you know, we came to the conclusion that we're in too deep. I'm in too deep. <laughs> yes. Break it down. Why are we doomed? Oh, it's gosh. a good place to start. Um, you know, are we doomed? I guess we could answer that question. Uh, we could be. Yeah. We could be. I think we're, we're on our way if we don't change a lot of things as an industry. Pardon me why I take off my Russian terrorist dragon suit i feel like i feel like what is it kanish from rounders or yeah, yeah. <laughs> Russian. so no i think we are i think you're right and it's something you know we can have a little fun with this but it's something we can get into um the industry's you know listen there's a lot going on the industry's been on a little bit of a a, a, a collision course right a little bit of like a, a a dangerous path for a minute and and it's scary it's scary to me i've been saying it loud for a while that this industry is doomed and part of that is because uh, you know as i've said before the anointing of false gods the terrible leadership the poor representation uh there's a lot of factors and you know i've i've been obviously highly motivated because i see the shit that people put out there and i'm like there's no way people fucking believe this because the amount of speed and you know even as recently the Collio noir thing like you know walking around with ceos with presidents just like you now in the big seat and they're walking around and they're like yeah it's the hunters it's like do we say anything just anything like whatever we're in the mood for whatever flies into our face at this point well much much like i think much like the news when we talk about you know, who do we put on? Who's, who's the unified voice? There's, there's just this circle of five, six, seven, ten people on the same right. shows saying the same thing mm -hmm. over and over. And there's some truth to what they're saying. Uh, but we don't have a very good unified voice. You don't have a very good unified message out to not only the public, but to, you know, our congressmen. And, and, and you're right. I mean, you're 100% right. And it's, it's, it's sad to me because I'm like... These are the same four or five people that are getting the same eight or 10 talking points and they're just getting in front of a mic. And I know how it goes. They're getting in front of the mic and they're just saying this, this, and this. And they're all bought and paid for. Nobody wants to ask a tough question. Nobody wants to answer a tough question. And when they answer anything remotely in the neighborhood of, of maybe a de one degree of difficulty, they clam up and their asshole puckers and they run in a corner and hide. Just be honest. Just be real. Yeah. You know, and they just be 100%. But they don't want to do that. They want to give some boilerplate answer or some cookie cutter answer that fits or works for whether it's like the Bill Maher show or, or some other honky dory thing that they're putting out there. And, and there's, there's a lot of problems going on in the industry right now because the industry has, has put such uh, onus on things like Instagram, things mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, spaces that I don't think are viable spaces long term. They, they are looking for their identity. I had the Warrior Poet guys in here, and they, they, I said there's going to be a ton of people on social media looking for lifeboats, it's looking for there. help. It's yeah, happening. They're already there. Um, not, not to dive off into it's completely no. different, but I want to go back to a, to a point you made about the, the same four or five people saying the same things and people being afraid to really kind of speak their mind. It's a double-edged sword. Sure. If you really speak your mind, you, you risk being ostracized, okay? Uh, you say the wrong thing. You say what you really, really feel, 
um, you know, you may not be invited back onto the news. Right. Uh, you may lose your spot. You may be, you may be downgraded. You're going to yeah. fall. And I think, I think Matt, no one's saying be a cunt, right? I don't think it's about being a, uh, being a douchebag. I think it's about being 100. I told you one of the biggest things I've never understood about this industry for a long time is that, you know, we have a news segment and a lot of, to me, what's supposed to be the biggest, baddest, roughest business of the world, the firearms industry, it's run and managed and oversaw by a lot of fucking pussies, a lot of snowflakes, and a lot of people that don't want to step up and say what needs to be said sometimes. And I don't mean that in a derogatory sense towards any one individual or towards them. I just think as a whole, because I, I think they are tough guys, hard-nosed guys. They need to step up and start talking, and they need to, to come out there and say, this is how I feel about whatever the issue is, political or otherwise. I think you've got a lot of, of C-level guys and, and, and girls who've been in this industry a long time. And, you know, firearms is a tough business and the, and the gun industry is a tough business. Uh, it's, it's always being looked at because firearms are scary, uh, mm. you know. But I think the fear comes from people are comfortable. People at the top are comfortable. You know, their firearm industry is really getting scrutinized over the past, not even six months, but maybe the past five, six mm. years. These people have been sitting in that spot for a very long time, and it's been very easy, and it's been very comfortable. They haven't had to worry about too much, the rise in, in uh, you know, NICS checks, mm. uh, all, the, all the new firearm sales. Um, you know, everyone's sitting back, and everyone's done extremely well for the past 12, 18 months without doing anything. Didn't even have lift a finger. Um, at what point does that bubble pop, though, and then what's going to happen with all these people in these companies? I, I just think it's better to be honest even if it hurts right like it's kind of like talking to your kid like you have to be straight up like listen it, it you can't can be painful. you can't stay out after midnight i'm not taking care of no grandkids you know what i mean like i'm not you know you can't stay out of the, so it's it's kind of like one of those things where it's like you know i go in i talk to people and i talk to companies all day long and i try to go to places where people aren't and am i always right no uh, but I think you have to try these different spaces. I said this to, last night to a, uh, I won't say his name because he's not here out of respect, a very well known, not very, very respected executive in the firearms business. I'd say a fairly large company, right? You were sitting there and I, he says like something like, what do you think it is? And I said, well, listen, it took X amount of years convincing you guys that Instagram was a real place. And now that you're convinced that all you see is Instagram. That's right. And that's part of the issue here. And part of the issue is a lot of these companies have run around and hired quote unquote marketing directors from within that industry and said, Oh yeah, you know, this is our, our marketing director. You know, he's got a really cool Instagram, so we're going to hire him. And, and these people have no idea what they're doing and they have no plan and they have no way to execute that plan. And that's a scary place for a lot of these companies. They don't know what direction to go in. And of course he brought this up too. You know, there's, they don't know what to do. They want to know what to do. They don't want to go out and hire Madison Avenue. We talked about this. What stage are they in? And it's, it's more about figuring out what mm. stage you're in. And you're going through that now a little bit. We are, we are. I mean, listen, we're not a, we're not a SIG, right? Mm. Uh, um, you know, Love you guys. <laughs> definitely a smaller business yeah um last time i was here we we did touch upon it uh let me go back to to instagram uh listen it was new it was fresh in 2015 you know maybe even earlier 2012 13 you know whatever it came out um and it was a space and it was a good space to be in mm. uh, it was a good you know, it was a good place to get noticed for on the cheap okay uh it didn't take a whiz to figure it out you could have you know, your younger brother do it for you. And it's, you know, you're right. But all that being said, social is a great place, but it's not the only place. And it should be not a sliver, maybe a little bit more, but it, should, it has a place in your, in your whole marketing plan, but it shouldn't be as big as a lot of people make it. I think it's dying a little bit. I think the struggle is the leap though. The struggle is understanding. Okay. Let's forget about Instagram. Throw that out. But let's imagine you want to create a, a four or five pronged approach. You want Instagram, you want LinkedIn, you want YouTube. Maybe you want to do start doing some stuff on on uh, TikTok, which I think you should. I think everybody should. I think that's an easy place to put recycled quick content. We just made a TikTok. Yeah, it's great. No, check it out. Enforces TikTok available now. Uh, but I, but I think that those are great. Those are great things to do, and you can't hire. The point of the, the moral of the story is you can't hire Bobby Sue because you've done that. To do the, you know, to do the social media. You've done yeah, that. We've all lived absolutely. through 
just can't get away with it anymore. And that's the struggle is the leveling up. Like if you spent as a leader, if you've spent, you know, 50,000 on a department, a hundred thousand on a department, and you've gotten away with that that long, it's, it, it, it's hard to make that leap. It, it, it is, it is. Um, but you have to, mm. uh, this, uh, I think we're, we're changing, we're evolving and we have to, or else we're going to end up like your first comment. We're going to be doomed. Fucked. Yeah, it's, it's hard. And listen, you know, I'll be the first to say, I, I love this business and I love a lot of people and I have lifelong friends in it. We joke, but last night we're saying, you know, we're all in a little too deep. We are. We're in it for life. And and listen, it's a great business. You find five great people, you know, but if you use the metric of like, you might only find five great people in your entire life, you know, that you consider good friends. So, you know, look at, this is a fun business guys to everybody listening. Matt loves this business. I know he does. I love this business and he knows that I do. And we all want to see it go forward. It just has to go through a very giant maturation period in the next six to 12 months. And I think it will. And I think it will because of a lot of factors. And I think it's going on now because of COVID. And I think we're seeing that. But we're not seeing that. What's hard is we're not seeing that leadership at the NRA and NSSF level that we need to see it happen. Yeah. Um, the NRA. Oh, boy. That's a, it's a mess. That's a deep dive, man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it is a total mess. Uh, I, I don't think they've been very helpful to the, the industry as a whole for a very long time. Very long time. Um, NSSF, uh, they're a little bit different space, though. Uh, they're, they're big on working with uh, retail stores and getting programs together, gun stores. Tom they made, also do, brought up a good point about them. He said, not to cut you out, but he said, maybe the NSSF isn't you know, the person we should be looking to for the answer. And he might be right about that. Mm. He may not be wrong. So I'm sorry, Larry and everybody. No, I'm sorry, sorry, Mark. Sorry, Larry. No, I love those guys. I I think what they do is very thankless work. Yeah. But I think they're in a tough spot because they have towed that line between being the bridge for the FFLs, doing SHOT Show. They're trying to be cute, a little bit of everything. I think they've got a tough job in front of them. Uh, I know they do do a lot of uh, behind-the-scenes work. On, on the lobbying side. Mm. Uh, you know firsthand, I know that. Yeah, they, they do they do pretty well. They, they are fighting for, you know, us, and I, and I say us as the industry as a whole. Uh, they do good work. I, are they the, the right answer and the only answer? No, it's, it's, it's multi-prong. Um, you know, GOA and FPC are doing some pretty good work. Uh, I think they're doing leaps and bounds uh, over the NRA. I don't, I don't think the NRA has any any juice left i like the fpc i would like to see more out of them i would like to see more in terms of like more of an outward facing image you know i'd like to know like i couldn't tell you all that they stand for Mm -hmm. right then again i couldn't tell you all that the nra stands for right Mm -hmm. so they all could do a better job projecting what it is they're about like i'd like i'd like to see that i'd like to look at that i guess it hasn't been in my face enough i haven't gotten that 12 points of contact yet you yeah, know right. i haven't i haven't seen it all i have looked at their page uh, i know they pay attention to what i'm doing that much i do know uh and i like their vibe the few things that i've read and and what they're trying to do and i like that approach of like we don't put our money into marketing because we put it all into that like i like that yeah, i listen, respect they're, it they're, That's, they're fighting for us on the uh on the legal side yeah i respect they really it. are and and you know i think is as leaders in the industry, we should look at it and maybe help them out a little bit. You know, we should be helping donate to that cause because it, they it's going to affect us all. Sooner or later, we're all going to be hit by some of these these just shitty gun laws that the progressive left is just shoving down everyone's throat. How bad is it, in your opinion? How bad are the laws? What you're seeing? How bad could it get? So we're out of Rhode Island. Mm. Okay, uh, it's pretty bad. We have some terrible, terrible people uh, pushing some very bad gun laws, and, and here's one mm. that uh, that came up recently. Uh, one of the one of the progressives has put a law in that, and, I, and I'm paraphrasing, but uh, they want to outlaw any magazine that has a floor plate. Now think about that for a minute. Mm. They all do. So it's not even about you know less than ten rounds. It's about the magazine itself. Make no mistake, it's not about gun control. It's about all-out banning. That's what they're after. Mm. That's it. That's the bottom line, and they'll get there. You know, piece by piece, law by law, state by state. It's coming. Unless we do something about it. 
does it seem so overwhelming that we can't do anything about it? What the question becomes, where, where do you start? Right. And I asked Tom this, I said, where's a great place to put money in? And he paused and you heard the podcast. He's like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know yet. You know, where do you put your energy and feel like you're making any traction? I think it's going to be a different answer for uh, each company. You know, what, what can we do versus what can everyone else do? Uh, larger companies, smaller companies. It's going to vary, but I think it goes back to that. Where, where is that unification? Mm. We're very segmented uh, and kind of scattered as an industry. There's, there's still little groups, little islands, and, and it doesn't feel like we're all fighting for the same cause. I think the solution is, and if I may, I'm going to take a stab and it's convenient for me to do this. It's my show. So <laughs> I think the best thing we could do as an industry, and we could all band together on this very easy. It's very hard to piecemeal take one issue, one bill, mm -hmm. one this. I would highly suggest to everybody, we have to start to be more and more every day, every day, everything that you do, inclusive to the industry. The more inclusive we are, the days of being, you know, the grumpy guy behind the counter, as we talked about, the the stodgy NRA guy, the you don't know how to hold your magazine, right. all the cliches that we've talked about a thousand times, you and I, all the the rubber neck, rubber dick bullshit that's come out of people's mouths. I know because I was a ninja and I flew a light ship. Listen, we get it. But this is the saddest industry because we're too obsessed with that to just move forward. Like... And we're seeing this now, you know, we're going to be hanging out, going to the fights, having some fun. We're seeing that now. People got bent out of shape when fitness guys came into the industry, bent out of shape when you see, you know, uh, people from the UFC. We need these people. You absolutely do. We need everybody. And we need everybody to band together and say, listen, I've said this. I've, I've not had a single owner of a gun company come through here. And I said, I asked Ryan McMillan this question, Navy SEAL McMillan. I said, you going to check on air? I asked him this. I said, are you going to give them their money back when they come to the register if they're not Navy SEAL enough for you? And he's like, no, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But that's kind of a culture that pre-exists. And I think if we could all band together and do one thing right now today, every company, just be as inclusive as you can be. Speak to everybody. That, that would help. That would be huge. Help. Yeah, I think, uh, I think you could be onto something. It kind of brings you to another point that, uh, I mean, you and I have discussed this ad nauseum. Um, we keep marketing to the same exactly. people over and over and over. We're sitting here right now watching a, a fishing show before we started this podcast. And what do what did we see? Game and fish. Yeah. What do we see? A Guns. a ten minute uh, you know commercial for you know whomever gun manufacturer. But I, I said this last night. Almost every fisherman I know. Yeah, it was a good a call by you. Right. Almost every guy who does or, or girl who does overlanding. Most of them have, you know, a pistol or very familiar with firearms. Mm. You know, UFC, great example. You're starting to bridge that gap, bringing those people in. Some people who say, yeah, you know what? I have a revolver. I shot my, mm. my buddy's gun or whatever. We got 9 million new, you know, if that's the number, gun owners this year or whatever it is. Um, they haven't been exposed to, you know, kind of the bullshit in the industry yet and what's going on with firearms. And they may not be aware of of all laws or maybe they are that's why we got nine million new gun owners um, but you, you've got to reach out you've got to expand and, and stop stop going to the same people and stop being lazy you know we're going through our own restructure now what i'm doing top to bottom uh, and we're changing the way that we're going to market what do you think what do you think um the mistake has been the last 10 or 15 years and who they market towards besides being very secular very one-dimensional if you were to point out you know a bottleneck mm -hmm. in that is it that failure to kind of see beyond you, you know I, I'll, I'll call it out because a friend of mine and, and i and i know his thoughts on this like you take for example the nra let's pick on yep. the, them for a second they're easy so you pick on them they always run and say oh geez you know we need to get you know donnie to, to speak at it or this you have all these great people that are, that are supporters of the industry. You got Dana White on here saying he's a supporter of the industry. Right. Does it blow your mind that no one's asked for a clip of that or anything or no one's? It's, it's surprising. I mean, Dana's such a high-profile guy. And to come on your show and be like, 
Yeah, man. I like guns. I'm cool cool about it. Yeah. It's all, it's all like cool. how you don't reach out to that guy or say, hey, John. You know, I actually did it in defense of one agency that we both do like. Um, they did kind of poke about it. But I said, look, I'm tired of doing things for you, you know, for you guys behind the scenes and you don't get any love. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about how that all works out. Right. You know, I'll tell you that story. But where's the bottleneck? Is that some of it? It could be. It could be. Um, it's that's a tough question. I don't know if I have a very good answer for you right now. So, I think that uh, that question needs a little more a little more thought before uh, I get something to you. There's, there, there's a, listen. There's a couple bottlenecks. Um, I'm not sure I have the answers for them. I don't think anybody really has the answers for them. No, but. Uh, we've got to do something. We've got to do something. And it's, you know, just kind of eyeballing uh, and looking at things we've done, we've done in the past. And uh, you and I have talked about on our many, many, many early morning conversations. Uh, we just, I think, I believe we have to branch out. I think, I think if I was speaking to a room full of everybody from the industry, everybody with influence or everybody with reach, I would say three things. One, everybody needs to stop the ego. Mm. for a minute while you're in this room stop the ego let's have a conversation about how we can include and speak to every group let's start there let's stop with the ads that look like shit and i'm not the only one saying this matt i had brendan from warrior poet you see me play the clips part of the reason why i did this show is to say i'm not crazy there are a lot of other people out there that I think seem, uh, see and feel the same way. Yeah. And I think, I think part of what needs to go on is that's one. Two, however you decide to do media in your company, and everybody's going to be limited. We got lube companies. We got light companies. We have optics companies. We have all these different variables. Everybody's going to approach media differently based on their budgets and what they can handle. Right. Cater to your strength. If the strength is the leader... And he's the best person to create media for that time being until you get the tactical Timmy or the whoever in the building or whoever can do it, then put out these things. But they don't have to live and breathe on Instagram. They don't. They can go on LinkedIn. And maybe that's where your relationships live. And I applaud people like Ryan McMillan who've stepped into that. Yeah, they absolutely do. LinkedIn's its own little planet and has to be treated differently. Um you know, than what you what you're going to put on Rumble or anything you know, else, yeah, or TikTok or take your pick. Uh, but it's another avenue. I think I think all of them need to, and I would say this to, to the group. I would say, and then you all need to take a moment and understand what you may not be good at, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's okay. You don't have to apologize for it. You don't have to go out and and try to buy it. It's great if you can. Makes the problem go away. But if you're not good at something, recognize it and say, you know, we're just, we're not going to go there. We can't go there. It's not our strong suit. Like I look at you and you're a great strategic planner. You're one of the leaders of the industry. I've known you for years. Dare I say even a bit of a mentor to me, like the crazy older brother that kind of gives me advice and tells me when I'm out of control. Uh, But you, you just you know what you're good at and you know what you're not and stay away from what you're not yeah you can't be everything to everybody right and that applies i mean that's just a life lesson right uh what what we're doing and and you know the opportunity they have now is to you know not restructure but like i said look at top to bottom of of where we are we found out what works we found out what doesn't work and that's more important what are we going to do about it and how are we going to change that uh as you said find out where your strengths are don't spend time where you where you suck you know, it's used to just like, oh, I have to be on. I have to be here. I have to be here. No, you don't. It's okay if you're not. You know, we're, uh, we're doing something a little bit different for us, you know, and taking some chances. And, you know, we're bringing everything in-house. 100% coming in-house. We're going to set the narrative. You, you, can't let, you can't let other people or the industry or, or, you know, whoever on Instagram set your name and your brand and, and, and you know, say who you are. We're going to take that ourselves and... If you don't, um, I think you're 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 at risk. You're yeah, you're being very risky. No, that works for if you got to outsource it because look, you just don't have the personnel, or you don't have the talent, or you don't have uh, the front man who can really speak for the company. 
you know, and get out there and, and, and be that, that face. Yeah, you may have to outsource it. But I would seriously consider, and, and any advice, maybe the smaller companies just coming in, uh, do it yourself. Create your own name. Find it. a good, healthy arbitrage, a yeah. yield from whatever media you're going to create. We talked about this last night. Find a healthy arbitrage. Stop doing one-offs. Mm, yeah that's where you get your 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 dick in a vice it's like the one-off shoot ah oh, we're gonna do this those are great if you're injecting them after the fact yeah it's great to be able to say hey we're gonna do a range day day awesome. fun we're gonna get some photos we're great. gonna do some stuff yep. we need it great awesome let it be an add-on let it be you let know it, let it be tertiary let it just let it just hang out there you know uh just stop with the mag dumps in the desert <laughs> That sort of stuff. It just, it needs to go away. And that's why we lose. We lose because we look simple. We lose because we look, we look lazy. I think we're very unorganized. I said it before. Uh, I mean, you start looking at, at, you know, what the left does. They're great at organizing and bringing Amazing. everybody together and putting that same message and just, just beating into everyone's heads. But and what do we, believable. what would you like to see us do? If you had a hundred million dollars, hmm. And you had the whole industry in front of you in a room. What would be the first thing you would implement? Oh, gosh. That's, uh, I don't even know. Because it has to drive you, because it drives me wild. Like, I look at the NRA, right? And I look at the four and a half million spent in Georgia. Mm. And I'm like, I get that they're at first a legislative initiative, right? That's what they are, essentially. Lobbyist. Right? A lobbyist, right? That's, that's an initiative. They're lobbying. And I get that. But four and a half million dollars, you could have built a real media can be a lobby too, and the left has proven that. Absolutely, they have. They they've kicked our ass at it. Like, why not say, "Hey, we're going to hold a million back"? Because I think the right place to put a lot of this is to start building a media platform. And like mm -hmm. you said, fresh faces, new faces, engaging conversations. Got to hit a little bit of the younger crowd too. It's you stop hitting the sixty-year-old white guy. <laughs> That's, that's not the demographic of this community anymore. It's, it's radically changed. I joke all the time. There's too many white old guys in the industry. It's, just, it's a cliche, yeah. but it's true. Uh, I could say that because I'm one of them. There's too many <laughs> white old guys. I'm one of them. And I'm too old. Like, look, I'm at a stage of the game to everybody listening that thinks, I know I'm never going to be the person they want but I do believe I'm the person they need right now. Could be. And, and listen, you're not, you're not tied to this, uh, this industry via a, a, a company, right? You know, a manufacturer or whatever. So you have the, you have the ability and the freedom and the luxury to call it out a little bit. You know, who, who's going to, who's going to come here and tell you, you can't do it. You, well, no. No, besides me, <laughs> besides you. no, you're right. You know, we talked about this a little last night. You're not wrong, but here's the thing. I still, I adhere to two rules on this show. Or try to. If they're not here to defend themselves, I'll say someone. Or if they haven't been on the show. Or I'll address it as a larger entity, as a group, if I don't like something they did. Uh, I try to do that as best I can. I'm human too. I make mistakes. The other thing, the other rule is, is a real simple one. I do my best to present not just how I feel, but kind of like having a baseball or football or hockey or a sports argument. I always say this to friends when we get into a debate. I can't do what ifs. You know, I try to have the debate or the argument in reality. Well, sure. this is what happened. And this is what, how I feel about what transpired or what happened. Well, you know, you got to understand we're like the Titanic and we're a ship. I don't get those analogies. And I know everybody out there listening might be laughing because they've heard this a hundred times from these entities. It takes us a while to turn. It takes us a while to do this. No, it doesn't. You can set up a cell phone and you can stream. You can do that. There's a lot you could do if you have the right dynamic people. But until you make that the focus, it's never going to be the focus. It takes a, a certain amount of discipline. W one of my giant fears, and you and I have discussed this, you know, many times, is is the escalation of what it takes to be noticed, or what you have to do to be noticed out there in the mm -hmm. in the universe. And as we just discussed, the left does a great job organizing, does a great job utilizing media. Uh, we lost our best media asset, and. 
Donald Trump in many ways, you know, because they were so obsessed with that that they couldn't do what they're doing now, which right. is canceling Gina Carano doing it. So it's the what it takes to be noticed. But I do think we're at the tail end, if I might say this, and we'll get to the topic of being noticed. I do think we're at the tail end, Matt, of the cancel Karens and cancel culture because people are so sick of it. God, I hope so. You know, the memes are coming out like can't like by us, like cancel. I, you know, yeah, yeah. we got to cancel everybody. Yeah, the listen. There's there's still some some moderates left, you know. Thankfully, uh, and and you, when the pendulum is swung too far to one side, you know, it's just it's never good. It's never good, uh, and that's what it is. It swung too, way too far to the left, and and people we gave them a voice. I can't believe people listen to it. They need, it, it. I want to vomit. Like people dig up a tweet that you said at 19 years old, and right. it says, you know, they said this or they and listen. Do I think every company, every brand, every entity out there has a right to say, hey, you know, this happened when you were 19. Hey, don't do that here or whatever. Right. Sure, there's a place for all that. But I mean, if we're going to analyze every little thing somebody says at any given time that they say it, and we're going to say, you know, they're a racist or they're this or they're that or they're not whatever, it's a little ridiculous. And we've seen cancel con culture in our own industry in so many ways. Everybody's, you know, on, on social media chattering. Well, I tell people all the time, some people put things out there just to create the chatter, just to create the interaction. Why not? And why not? So when you get into the topic of what it takes to be noticed today, we actually had a really good conversation last night about this with an executive that's not here, uh, with two executives. But we got into this a little bit. And I said, and I was very honest, you know, it's, it's about being able to display the best version of you always in the best format that you feel you can display it. And I had said, I felt that I found that in this. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think once you find that, you can find ways to garner support and to build a community and to build, you know, some interest. But not everybody finds that. It's hard, right? It is, it is hard. Um, you know, as, as any manufacturer will tell you, it's, you, you got to start with the brand. You, you got to build your brand up and you got to get it out there and you got to create your vibe. And you know, the, the hardest thing to do is, okay, you're sitting in a, a marketing meeting. How do we reach that customer? Mm. What do we do? Uh, and that's where you got to branch out. So like, like you've demonstrated, maybe it's TikTok. You know, maybe it's live streams. Let, uh, let, the, let the end user in a little bit and open the kimono and be like, hey, this is what we do. The kimono. Open the kimono, yeah, right? Um, invite them in. Make them feel welcome like they're a part of it. Everyone, it. My hobbies. I see other companies do that very well, and, and I end up supporting those brands because I feel that association, you know, and I'll wear, the, I'll wear their, their T-shirt. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the walking billboard for them. I'm, I'm one of the thousand screaming fans, mm -hmm. you know, clanking the pots and pans together because they've done a good job and they, and they've, you know, they, that's how you, you keep your customers. I think one of the pitfalls when you're, and it's a great question, you know, what to do to get noticed. I think one of the mistakes brands make when they're all sitting in that conference room, right. And they're all, they're all, they're all sitting there. Right. And so, so this is a tricky thing with media, right? 80s reference here. Alert. Mr. Mom, right? When they're sitting in the in the room and the the, the and they're trying to figure out the tuna fish slogan. Yeah. And the, they look at the wife and they go, Do you eat tuna fish? Well, you're qualified. Yeah. Everybody's qualified to chime in. I believe that. But to put together a repeatable strategy that works, not everybody's qualified to do that. One of the reasons I've been a fan of TikTok, and I talked about this with um, the Warrior Poet guys who are very savvy, I said, because most of these companies are bad. And when you're bad, play fast. When you're worse, play faster. What's mm. TikTok? Fast. So 15 seconds, a light switching on, whatever. If you're a light company, if you're a lube company, those are great spaces. They are. Great spaces to be in. Quick little, quick and dirty videos. If you can't have someone in your department help and support that and be able to do that and be able to do a quick little jump cut or something, you know, uh, or, or something along the lines of like, if you're looking to purchase a, a, a weapons light, you know, here's, here's what we're looking at. You know, a quick, quick something quick and filthy that does the trick. And you don't have to be perfect there. That's what I love no, about it's, that. It's, it's okay to be a little off. It's okay to be a little quirky. It's okay to be a little a little funny and, and, and show the other side of yourself. Uh, this, this question was raised last night. How much, how much fun can we have in the industry as a manufacturer? And, and the, the good answer is, yeah, there's room for fun. Um, but you, gotta, you still have to be responsible because it's just the industry we're in. 
but absolutely have some fun. Stop being so stodgy and stiff. Yeah, it's just it's 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 old. No, Vesk showed us that. Magpul in the beginning showed us that mm. some of that. I love that ghetto. Yeah, video. you know so they good. showed us some of that. You can have fun and not take yourself too seriously, yeah. but that goes hand in hand, part and parcel with the whole. We have to be inclusive to everybody. Mm. I know the things that you like. I know the you like moto. I know a lot of the different things that you're into. You know what I like. I enjoy them and I try them and I go headfirst into them. I'm a box checker guy, so I like trying everything and it's almost like a beta test I do. So that by the time I go to a company or I work with a brand, I'm able to say, well, I've been there or I've seen that industry or I can tell you how they do it. Got a little taste. I got a taste of it. And I'm the worst guy to play the game with of you don't know. Mm. Oh, really? You want to go there? It's probably the worst way to go. You know, you will fail every time with me. And that's what I feel a good marketing director or a good brand manager brings to the table some knowledge of a particular area or a space and if we branch out and we start to include and bring in fishing motorcycling outdoors action sports Mm -hmm. i've said it a hundred times matt one of the biggest problems in the firearms business is how we brand ourselves we brand ourselves out of around the black gun we brand ourselves around that we need to brand ourselves as the defense industry as a whole and what does that encompass defense of your body taking care of your body your mind your soul and i'm not trying to sound corny here i legitimately believe this in my core if we get to that place nobody cared about just skateboarding just rollerblading just this when they started to create you know the the x games and they called it action sports all of a sudden there was monster energy drinks there was nintendo there was sega there was this there was that it was all these things were involved because it was a whole genre it was surfing it was everything extreme yeah you know, a good example of, of people who I think has really got it right or really got it right. Um, Red Bull. Jesus. It's way too early. Um, they, they sponsor anything and everything. They sponsor airplane races. You so, it's things? great. Like it's fucking great. Through the tubes and, you know. It's actually quite amazing. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, Monster's done a great job. Um, they get it. They, they get branding. They get lifestyle. Uh, we don't. We don't. Why? Oh, so many reasons. But what's number? What sticks out to you? Is it? Is it the egos? That could be part of it. That could be part of it. I think there's a the barrier. There is a little bit of ego. I think it's a little bit of a lot of these people that call the shots are removed. Like as we touched the the as we touched on before the gap between the people in charge and the people that could make change, could bring a lot of change. The people that may be, you may have to listen to them. Mm-hmm. You're right. You know, wow, he's only 29. What does he know? Or, or what is, you know, she just got out of college. Oh, I think there's a lot of knowledge there. It's untapped. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, it could be ego. So to play off that, uh, you know, hey, I'm 60. I'm, I've been doing this forever and, and I know best. And, well, maybe you don't. I watched an interesting special. It was the Nintendo versus Sega, the console wars. Yeah. It's available to anyone watch, you know, listen, listen to this if you want to pay attention to it. And if you watch that, you see where very simply how a marketing strategy developed, right? Nintendo was very Disney, for lack of better words. It was very soft. It, it fit into a genre of like the pre-14, 15-year-old mm. age bracket. And then Sega came in with a very well-known marketer, uh, Tom Kalinske. Uh, It's a great story. Tom came from Mattel. You know, he understood that space. He was a toy guy. He understood how to develop into new areas. And he said, the market segment I wanted to go after was the market that people were going to age into. He said, we were going to get all of Nintendo's customers from 15 to 20. We wanted like that pre-college and a high school to college. And he said it took two years, but the tide turned. We wanted to be more aggressive. And they said one of the huge coups for them was Mortal Kombat showing the blood right. so different versus games, Nintendo right? different. Different yeah. style, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and they said that was one of the things. Mario was very soft. Yeah, it's, it's listen, like you said, it's 8 to 12 years old, 8 to, eight to 14, whatever. You yeah, know, you want something a little more exciting, a little harder, a little edgier, and, and that's where they stepped in. You're right. They, they killed it. And, and, and Nintendo was... 
Donkey Kong and Mario and mm-hmm. Sega was, you know, beat em ups and first person shooters and they catered to a genre. And I think the gun industry could take a page from that. And one of the things they could take from that, in my opinion, my humble opinion, one of the spaces people aren't exploiting enough is, and I've said it a hundred times, is the gamer genre looking to them uh, is in many ways the minority ownership now that are buying guns and that are looking for support and that are looking for help. That's a great space to look into. Uh, I think one of the fatal flaws, though, is going to be that ego of, but we've always bought the urinal cakes at SHOT Show. (laughs) <laughs> but we've always bought the banner. Yeah. yeah. But we've always done this. Listen, you got to, this is the year, and I want to get to this topic. This is the year to wipe the slate a little clean and say we're going to start fresh and we're going to throw some money in a direction that we're going to try some things. Try anything. Try something new. Try something brand new. Yeah. What's it going to hurt you? A couple bucks. Money you were going to spend anyway. You're spend it anyway. Maybe you get a lesson out of it and be like, ah, God, that was a failure. But that's okay. We learned something from it. Mm-hmm. And not be a disaster about it. Now, recently you've been promoted. Yes. How's that working out? Pretty good. Pretty good. The, um, the opportunity you know, arose uh, and I took it. And uh, it's given me uh, the ability to look at the company from the top to bottom and more importantly, bottom to top. Now, you start like most new guys in the big chair with the operational side, the product side, but then you make it over to marketing (laughs) and what prompts some of these adjustments and changes that you're looking at besides all the things that we talked about. Is it just, uh, wanting to put your stamp on it? Is it time? Is it, uh, or like you say, bringing it in a house. And we talked about this before. What begins to shape that strategy and what begins to make that a reality? Do you start with bringing in maybe a a director to oversee the whole thing or do you start to piece it together from the bottom up? So there's two strategies, uh, just to touch on something that you brought. It's not my stamp, but it's going to be the stamp that's good for us. And you have to to look at a whole and there's no ego uh, on this. You know, everybody's everybody is important. Everyone has a, has a role. Everyone has a function. Uh, and if one of them isn't working, well, you've got a problem. Um, so when you, when you look at marketing in the department or any department for that matter, uh, is it top down, bottom up? It's a little bit of both. Mm. Uh, if you don't have good leadership, it's just going to be a jumbled mess. Right. So that's one of the key things you, you got to bring in somebody qualified you have to be you have to have somebody that has has been there has the experience uh maybe they come from a different industry maybe they bring some knowledge that that they they learned in you know x or y industry and said hey this has worked over here i don't see anyone doing it or i see very few people or or only one company is doing it well take a page out of that book you know you got to be able to listen uh once you can you can find that that right person um you got to give them a little bit of leeway and say, okay, who are you looking for? What type of person do you want to bring in? So we all know we need a, a, a really good manager or director. Uh, you need to bring somebody in that does graphics. Okay. Absolute must. You need somebody who can run video, not just snap pictures with their iPhone and post shit on Instagram. Uh, somebody has got some experience behind the camera. You know, uh, you need critical, I think is somebody who can edit. It's most important. Take that, take that hour long video shoot that you did, cut it up into segments, spread that media out, do, do, do micro, you know, uh, things, um, 15 seconds, split it up into TikTok, split it up into, you know, whatever, uh, take that, take that interview and post a little clip on LinkedIn, Mm. uh, and then say, Hey, here's, here's the link. Spread it out, but create micro content, stuff that's fast, digestible. Uh, it helps build the brand uh, and it gets you out there you know, in spaces that you may not be in. But there's three, four, five critical uh, people, positions that have to be filled if you're going to do it right. And, I, and we talked about this a little last night. I'm just a big believer when you're stripping it down, some of the best things to do even in your budgetary approach is to take a minute and take a step back from 
lumping everything into marketing and saying, we're going to put shows in there. We're going to put this mm -hmm. in there. Start to look at things on a case by case basis and start to separate and line item things out. Uh, you know, I, I brought up some interesting points last night. I thought when we were talking, because, you know, you can tell if someone's good for a marketing director's seat or been there because how they'll segment their budget. And that's really important. But I think you have to separate those things. And like you said, not everybody's sick. Not everybody can have a show department, an events department of this or that. But you have to have the, when you're wiping the slate clean, you have to start out, I think, by kind of segmenting. Look, we need a really good video editor for just video. Everything that we do in video. We need a good graphic designer that maybe can help with a newsletter or maybe is handy with a camera. So you have a little bit of a slash person, right? Yeah, they, they, everyone's going to wear multiple uh, hats in a, in a smaller company. We all do. Mm -hmm. You have to. Um, but to find a good director level person that can maestro the whole thing and create repeatable strategies and you can snap your fingers, those aren't all readily available people. They're not. They're very hard to find. You're finding that out now. They're hard to find people. And the ones that you do find, uh, you know, they're worth it. They know what they're worth. That's an investment. And you, know, and you should be spending there. You know, and people don't realize what the cost of that looks like. And for someone to really come in and roll their sleeves up and say, we're going to put strategies together that work. And that's different. And one of the confusions in the industry is that's not an ad person. Ugh, no. That's the one of the big misconceptions is people want to lump that in to say, you know, oh, yeah, you're right. We need someone who can buy an ad. Listen, you can buy an ad. Any moron can buy an ad. Yeah. An ad buyer is worthless. To me, if your marketing director should be able to get in front of a camera. They should be a bit of a PR person. They should be a bit of a, a little. They should be a slash themselves. They mm. should be able to accomplish a couple things. Um, they should be able to storyboard to play things out. Hey, can go. We can do this. We can do this. We can do this. This could lead to this. This could lead to that. Uh, and if you don't segment that way, and these are proven methods. Uh, when you look at shows, yes, it's easy to say shot shows a marketing endeavor, right? It's easy to say NRA shows a marketing endeavor, but you can't flip the switch as a president or as an owner and conveniently say, well, it's a sales endeavor. Well, is it a sales endeavor or is it a marketing endeavor? Cause I want to know, cause where's it going to go with my budget? Sales is part of marketing, right? Right. Marketing is the, the, the big, uh, the big umbrella. Uh, yeah, you, you do need somebody, somebody decent and, and something you'd said earlier is yeah. Separate your trade show budget. That's, that's done. Uh, put something out that's going to say, Hey, we're going to take $50,000, a hundred thousand dollars. Uh, we're going to we're going to get the equipment and we're going to create our own content and we're going to spend it here, 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 here. Here's a reserve of fifteen thousand, twenty thousand dollars. We don't know what to do with it. And find something else. Take take it as a flyer. Right. Just just put it somewhere that maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. Yeah, I think I think any spaces you either don't want to be in. And I've said this many times. It's like investing in the market. Every part of your pyramid investing in the market, your money now is going to be in a spec investment. So there might be spaces, whether it's like we said, traditional podcasting, certain areas that you say like, Hey, look, I don't think we're going to do that. We'll do some incarnation, but maybe we should invest in that. And that's part of the reason why you invested in magazines. Hey, we don't publish a magazine. So I'm going to invest in a magazine. It's common sense. You know, look at the spaces you're not in or have no desire to be in and say, we'll just buy some ads in that space. You know, that'll, that'll cure some of that problem. Uh, that can solve a lot of your short term issues. And that's what ad buying should be. Hey, you know, we're going to buy ads in this because we're not there. Right. And that, that solves that problem. Uh, and the stuff that you should be taking risks on, to me, as a brand, uh, should be areas that you have some interest in. Now, the flip side to that is you might have tremendous interest in podcasting or you might have tremendous interest in short, what I call mini commercials, you know, things like that. But you need to bring someone in who's a bit of a creator who understands or maybe have them as a consultant. And that's where they can really help you in a hands-on way to shape some of that. And that's where some of these consulting agencies you know, and you've worked with a bunch in the past that can be helpful and can bridge the gap. Absolutely, they can. There's, there's some things that are very valuable in there. Yeah, and I think taking advantage of them in that consulting capacity is where they can hit a home run for you in a short term. An 18-month strategy, hey, look, like, like, I don't want to deal with this. Like, I, I got to bring someone in my plate. that can help. Do it, yeah. Yeah, in building, you know, there's no reason why you can't say, okay, what are our strengths? Sit down with a whiteboard. Our strengths are this, this, and this. We're going to cater to that. The other stuff that we don't fill the gap in, we have to seek out some advertising or some consultancy. Seek out somebody who's better at it than you. Learn from them. A hundred percent. Now, I want to talk about, come back to the notice thing mm. and bring this all together. It is 
something that's near and dear to me because I want the leaders of the industry to step up. I want them to be heard. I want them to be known. But we had an interesting conversation uh, with someone last night that that kind of wants to be noticed, kind of doesn't want to be noticed. There's a big struggle with that in leadership in the industry. Do you think, I don't think it's something that has to be clearly defined. And we touched on that last night, but you have to clearly define to your people where you want to be. I, I, wa- I, you know, as many know, I'm a huge fan of Jim Fuller. I think Jim Fuller is the godfather of AKs. Right. I think he totally. is the man. Yep. But I also worked for an owner that wanted to be that guy, you know? But I said, you're not going to be that guy unless you shape the narrative. As you said, control the narrative. Absolutely. So everybody's an expert. Just ask them. That's right. Grant Cardone's an expert in real estate. I don't know his real estate holdings, but I know he buys a lot of ads on YouTube saying he's an expert. Yep. So you, to that point, you have to shape that narrative. How does an owner or a president at this point define what role they want to play and how they want to be outwardly facing? It, it, at the very least, I believe, if I worked for you tomorrow, I'd say, you know what, boss? Once a quarter, I think you got to come out with something. Something we can chop up, something we can put on LinkedIn, something you can speak to your co- colleagues and peers and industry leaders and say, here's how I feel about what's going on and here's what's going on with my brand and here's what's going on with our company. Um, and you look at somebody like Dana White as an example at the mm-hmm. UFC. And he says straight out, like, you know, his, his story about when COVID hit was legendary. He put everybody in a room and he said, my goal right now as your leader is to have you all be working right. through COVID. Keep you all working, keep you cashing a paycheck, fighters included. And he did that. Come hell or high water, my goal is to keep you getting paid. You all like that strategy? Yeah, okay, that's what we're going to go with. I think we need that in this industry. And when this COVID thing hit, Matt, everybody was like diving for the bushes. Right. We're in the toughest industry in the world. But everybody's like, hide, get the shredder. You know, like, let's run and hide. Burn it down. Burn it down. Yeah. And that's terrifying to me. So what's the, you know, I think at the very least, that's what every leader should be doing. You should be putting something out and a video can serve as a press release. It absolutely can. I mean, just putting something out to, to the wires and uh, the, the standard places that we all put press releases. That's great. It's a necessary part. But again, it's, it's one part. Uh, should you do a, a quarterly address? Yeah. You know, everyone's three everyone's, times a year, even if it's Merry Christmas, wh- whatever it is. And it, and it shows you know, first of all, you got to take care of your employees. Uh, I'm a firm believer in if, if your employees from, from top to bottom, if you're not addressing them, taking care of them, uh, making them want to come to mm. work, having a nice, happy you know, family, I think it's going to be very difficult. Uh, that, that the corporate culture is very, very important. You've got you've to treat your employees right. they got to be number one. And they'll put out good product. They'll want to come to work. They'll be excited to to make that video, the next video. They'll be excited to talk about the brand. Uh, the enthusiasm will show. We'll show at trade shows. We've all walked around trade shows, and the guy, they're, they're, some of them are robots. They're just spitting the same crap out every time. It's like they don't want to be there. Sad. Yeah. That's why you see a lot of guys rotate just between, you know, oh, you were at, you were at Company X six months ago, and in two years from the now. The Shot Show be, Shuffle. Hey. It happens, right? The shot show shuffle. Yeah. But to, right for to get back to what you said, uh, yeah, you got to be vocal. You got to put it out there. Uh, you have to say something. You can't remain. You can't remain quiet and and just you know hide behind you know the name on the door. You should be addressing the industry. You should be you should be talking about where you where we are, where we're going, what we're doing, uh, and put it out there. Offer your thoughts. You're not going to get anywhere if you don't. No. And to your point about controlling the narrative, if you don't, someone else is gonna. That's right. And you can't get mad and sit there and stomp your feet if someone else does. That's Karen culture in itself. Yeah. He has what I want, so I want to try to take it from him. But I don't have the balls to take it, so I'm just gonna sit back and cry. Yep. Do something. Something. Anything. Whatever it is. But get out there. Post your opinion over on LinkedIn. You want to do a, you know, a B2B stuff? Talk to your, 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 uh, your other people in the industry put it out there may not always have to be to the the end user and the customer but that's critical too and you have have to segment different addresses and you can do this very easily you have to segment your social media outlets by age demographic and say this is the content that we need to put here this is what we need to put here absolutely look what you said with tiktok it's a younger it's a younger audience Uh, facebook is definitely an older audience Uh, instagram it's 
Man, it's a fucking mess. That's why if it was me hiring a department tomorrow, Matt, what I would do is Facebook, I'd hire a writer. Mm-hmm. I'd hire someone a little more seasoned. Maybe they were a writer at a few other places, like a Dave. You know, I'd hire someone who's a writer. Hey, put put two blogs up a month. Put two fo- Here's a little basket of photos. Do a write-up on, on some products and just put it there and let it live and let it breathe. And then you just recycle your links there. To, to, to stuff you're doing on different platforms. And I would call that good. Unless you're going to do long tail advertising or something on Facebook, which you're not going to do. No. So that's a whole other story. But I would hire a writer into that. Hey, listen, what can we work out for four, five, six articles a month? You know, something, write, little write-ups. Uh, get some of your publishing buddies to publish some stuff on there and put some stuff out there. I'm bringing writers for that. Uh, in a heartbeat, TikTok is something you can definitely bring in house and use your chops and your clips 100%. very easily. Instagram, something you can bring in house, use your chops, use your clips very easily. Just reformat them for reels and for other things. Uh, when you get into audio, it's, it's very simple, distributed through all the different audio networks mm-hmm. very easily. Get something like a Podbean or Anchor or something yeah, like that, distribute it out. And it doesn't have to be, and you brought this up last night, it doesn't have to be a traditional podcast. It can be a vlog. It can be a tabletop. It can be... It can be whatever you want. And I think that's where we get, we get stuck. It doesn't have to be guns, guns, guns mm-hmm. all the time. Uh, that's, that's one single part. Small part. Yeah. I mean, dude, dude we, we're, we're just kicking around silly ideas on a, on a podcast, and maybe it's one a month. Maybe it's just one a quarter. Maybe we just dip our toe in it. Um, Maybe it's maybe it's two guys just just talking about stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's 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 industry related, but maybe you take a fifteen minute segment, right? And this is, this is one of the crazier ideas, and make a cocktail, make make some goofy cocktail and try it, and and that's maybe that's our shtick. Get you something different. Bring in people from from other industries that are that are related, like like motorcycles, like camping, like fishing, like take your pick. There's 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 twenty other industries that you could reach out to where there's that crossover and i think that's a big mistake that we make as an industry some some guys do it really well and some companies do it really well uh most of them don't i think anybody you bring in and you create an experience around Mm. whether it's once a quarter or twice a quarter and you introduce them to your brand that can help not only with educating yourself educating your network building your network building a foothold in maybe a new industry that you're looking at learning from their ideas there's so much to be gained and to me the gain outweighs the risk the ability to build into those spaces outweighs the risk of of, of the, there's a greater risk to not doing it right right it doesn't cost you anything to take a chance mm-hmm. it may cost you a couple of bucks like you said that's it and if it's something you love and you're passionate about and you see the crossover try it What's the worst that happens? You have somebody, say you have a Travis Pastrana in, right? right. Which would be maybe a, like a dream guest for you, totally. right? He hangs out. You got a couple guns. You show him the lights, hangs out, do an interview. And he's like, damn, I didn't know all this existed. I didn't know. Like, wow, my head's blown. Right. You know, I've never seen anything like this. This is really cool. And you, you create a whole thing around that. And you put that out there. What's the loss? There is no loss. There's no loss. Take take your your you know your corporate hat off. What do you like to do? So yeah, we all have an interest in in firearms, you know, in that that kind of lifestyle. But we all have other interests. Go there because there's a lot more people just like you. We miss that, mm-hmm. and it and it's it's a pretty safe bet. It's a pretty easy space to to walk into and take a chance on it. You know, it's funny because during that console wars thing tom Kalinsky said i like to go fast you know i, I like cars i like to go fast so we needed a, a face of sega to go after mario and he created sonic mm. and he was like it fit kind of what yeah, i liked and what i was about yep. and he's like i always like to go head on against my competition you know i liked to do that that was what i enjoyed that was where i lived and breathed and it was all in good fun you know and we enjoyed it. It was the competitive nature. And I see that, you know, I'm, I'm a believer in that. I know people have their thoughts, but sometimes it can be a, a, it doesn't have to be an enemy per se. It doesn't have to be somebody you, you, you put a face on, but you can have something that makes you appear or um, gives the perception off that you're willing to come get in the fight 
mm. so to speak. Take a chance. Get in the fight. Take a chance. Listen, it's it, it, people overthink it is probably the best way for me to put it. There's a lot of overthinking going on. And then what happens is owners get frustrated, presidents, CEOs get frustrated, and they go back to, yeah, but how do we get the light in there? Mm. Very product-centric. That's all they care about. And I've sat, and you know this, I've sat up in meetings and I've said, nobody cares about that. Like nobody, nobody fucking cares. No one cares. I said it to her. I said, okay, you make an AK. AK has been around for a thousand years. Mm. You're not doing anything with that thing that's that exciting. Right. You pull the trigger, it goes bang. You got you to gotta create the vibe. You got to create that connection. Yeah. I buy Nikes because I think I'm going to dunk a ball like Jordan. That's right. Hey, it, it's that weekend, that week. What do you want to do in the weekend? Who do you want to be? What's that, <sighs> what's that lifestyle? Um, you know, I'm, not, I'm never going to be a, a professional racer, but hey, you might like to do it on the weekend and, and just kind of get that Walter Mitty thing. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the association. That. That's you, you, you wear whatever company's hat or you wear the, the Kuyu t-shirt or, you know, because you, you get it. You, and, you and want that's, to be a part of that family. And that's what I never understood. In this industry, we stay so inbred. Is the term I like to use. It's, and it's like every one of us want to like, we go to the UFC, we want to wear UFC stuff. We go to WWE, we want to wear WWE stuff. We go to like all these different things, we want to wear this. They want to wear our stuff. Let them wear our stuff. Exactly, exactly. Stop obsessing over like, but he's not a Navy SEAL. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who fucking, what the, what are we, what are we doing here? Are we trying to put products in everybody's hands? Or just like, like I told you this, and it's a running joke. If I had a dollar for every time at SHOT Show, I went to a booth and they said, you don't understand special forces are looking at this. <laughs> and you know that yeah. world just as good as anybody, century. if not better. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a path to riches. Uh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I think a big mistake that we all make too is we focus on this, just this little group of, he's SF. He's a door gunner. Yeah. Uh, but listen, important part, and they, they bring experience that you know, very few can, uh, but it's this much of the segment. What I'd love to do is go to a booth and say, hey, we're really trying to get this in everybody's hands. How That would be the most refreshing thing I've ever heard from a, 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 yep. a booth in my life. I would collapse. Yeah. How refreshing would that be to hear? Get it, get it to the consumer. We're all consumers, right? But get it to that larger group. Get it to the everyday guy and girl. That's where the big miss is. Huge. Yep. You know, you got to stop just focusing on SWAT teams or stop, stop just being so, so, you know, channel centric. Broaden your horizons. Open it up. Get everybody involved. Why not? Listen, I think we've been going for almost forever. How long have we been going I for? I have no idea. Over an hour. Oh boy. An hour and 20 almost breakfast can wait i know no it can't it could though it could it i think we covered everything i do want to ask you this one last question one one last fleeting question where do people put their money now to all your customers and all your people out there paying attention you, we've brought up the nra the nssf we've brought up these things i have a good answer for you if i was pr in you for a minute mm. i'm gonna pr you for a minute I'd say the best thing you can do right now, if you're a fan of Enforce or you're a fan of any product, put your money in the companies you believe in. Maybe it's not an entity, but if you believe in where a company's going and what they're trying to do and the leader and the person in charge, put your money there. Maybe it doesn't have to be NRA. Maybe it doesn't have to be NSSF. Maybe it doesn't have to be one of these things. Go in that direction. And I've been searching for that answer for a while since I had Tom on. But what do you say? That might be a good philosophy. Uh, it's certainly one way. Um, you know, like you said, go where you're comfortable. Go where, go where you have relationships. Go where you, you feel like you can work with and, and say, yeah, I want to be a part of that. Uh, I believe in what they're doing. I believe in their goals and I believe in, in how they're doing it. Um, you know, we, we talked a little bit about uh, GOA and FPC. I think they're great organizations, and I think they really, really need some support from us. Share a post. If you don't have the money, sometimes it's not about money, mm. right? Share a post. If you bought something, then say you like it. Yeah. 
It goes a long way. I always tell people if you listen to an episode and you like it, share it. Absolutely. That's a great way to support. Not everybody can put $500 in a GoFundMe or in an envelope. Maybe it's just yeah, it a doesn't have to be dollar driven either. Share your thought. And maybe that's the solution. Good place to start. Listen, I know you'll be on 100 times. I'll be back. I hope so. And we could do this all day. Let everybody know where they can find you, where they can reach out, and how to get in touch. Yeah, you can find us at our website, www.enforce-mill.com. Mm. Find us on many of the social platforms. Find us and TikTok. Tra- and TikTok. Mm. You know, find us at trade shows. Come over and say hi. We'd love to talk to you. And I can attest to this. If Matt's not at a physical booth, he's always walking around. He's always bopping around the shows. He's not hard to find. Uh, and he's always open to having a conversation and a laugh. And I'll talk to anybody. Yep. Always ap- approachable. Look for the blazer. That's a spark coat. <laughs> Look for the spark coat. <laughs> well, I appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thanks for having me on. Oh, anytime. Always welcome. Matt Wolf, now president of Enforce. We're going to roll the reel. I want to thank all the sponsors. I want to thank everyone who participated in putting the show forward. I want to thank Enforce. Go check them out. Amazing line of lights. Appreciate them. All the sponsors are on the reel at the end. Uh, head over to the website. Go check it out and leave reviews as best you can. Special thanks to this week to Kuyu Clothing. Thank you. We're out. That's good. So this will roll at the end. I'll show you. I just like this. I'm going to add another fader. I'm going to have to add you into this fader, but we put that piece in. And then what I can always do is play.